Hi there, and welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food, and we keep it real simple. And today, I'm gonna to show you a secret, but don't tell anybody. You can proof your bread right in the Ninja Foodie. That's right, we're gonna make homemade bread in 90 minutes. Let me show you how. We have three cups of all-purpose flour here. We have two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. Now I'm using instant yeast, but if you have active dry yeast, that's fine too. I'm gonna show you how to proof the yeast and get it going um, so that your bread uh, rises. This is equal to one packet. So if you have those little packets um, of the yeast in your cabinet, that'll be fine. This is two and a quarter teaspoons. I buy mine in bulk because I make a lot of bread. Um, we have one teaspoon of kosher salt and two teaspoons of just plain white sugar, a little bit of extra flour over here for flouring our surface, and one cup of warm tap water. Now, I let this, the water run till it was about 110 degrees. It's probably cooled off to about 106 by now, and that's fine. We want the temperature between 105 and 110 for the best proofing of an active dry yeast. Now again, I'm using instant. I don't really have to do this step. So if you're using instant, you can just put it right in with your dry ingredients, no problem. But I'm gonna show you how to proof the yeast. So we have our teaspoon, our two teaspoons of sugar. We're just gonna add in about a tablespoon or so of the warm water. And we're gonna sprinkle the yeast over top and then you do absolutely nothing. The yeast will start to um, eat the sugar and it will start to bubble up and bloom as we call it. All right, so it's been a couple of minutes and there's a lot of little bubbles forming and it's starting to get a little frothy. So we're ready to move on. That means that our yeast is activated. Now mine's instant again. I could skip that step, but just wanted to show you guys in case you're using um, active dry yeast and not instant dry yeast. All right, so now I have my three cups of flour and I'm gonna go ahead and add in the salt to that. And we're gonna go ahead and add in the yeast. And we're gonna add in the cup of water. That is scant now, a tablespoon, because we use that to activate the yeast. And while I'm while I'm pouring, I'm gonna be kind of tossing the flour around. Just to get it combined a little bit more. And now you could certainly use a stand mixer with a dough hook to make this, and you would even, it would even take less time. Um, but you know, not everybody has them, and I just wanted to show how easy it is to make homemade bread at home uh, without any fancy equipment, except for our Ninja Foodie. Uh, because that's gonna make this go really fast. We're gonna proof the bread and bake the bread right in the Ninja Foodie. All right, I'm gonna pour the rest in and just work a little bit more in my bowl to get as much of the water combined with the flour and then I'm gonna to move to my work surface and we're gonna do a little bit of kneading. I think that's the part about bread making that everybody dreads is the kneading of the bread. But honest to goodness, I think it is therapeutic. Like, there is nothing better than taking like this sticky ball of dough and kneading it um, into this glorious, smooth uh, ball of dough that then becomes a beautiful loaf of dough. So I love making bread. Now sourdough bread, not so much. I have struggled with a starter for a very long time. I never have gotten it right. So sourdough bread is not my thing. Okay, so now we have kind of like a loose dough. I mean, it's not holding together. There's extra flour down there. That is not going to matter. I'm just going to dump it out. First, I'm just going to put a little bit of flour down, smooth that out a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and dump this out onto our work surface. And you could use a regular cutting board for this, um, but I like this little pastry mat that I have from uh, Pampered Chef. And I will link to it below in case you're interested in getting one. This is great for um, all kinds of baking, like the biscuit video that I did that I will link to right over there. I made them right on this mat as well. Okay, that's good. Now we get working with our hands, so make sure your hands are nice and clean, which mine are. And we're just gonna take the dough, just kind of turn it and pull it back over itself. Turn it, pull it back over itself. Each time trying to grab some of that loose flour, turn it, push down, 
turn it. Kind of the same technique that we use with the biscuits, but this time we're not worried about overworking the dough. With the biscuit video, we were really careful not to over knead it because we didn't want to break up the butter and, and, um, and create some flat biscuits. So here though, we want to uh, really work the dough. So we're going to keep going like this until we get all of the flour incorporated. Then go ahead and put your, your muscles into it. And it might feel a little bit sticky at first, but as you work with it, and get all this flour incorporated, it is definitely going to become a lot less sticky. If you need to add a little more flour because it's still sticking, go ahead, just sprinkle a little bit on, okay? okay once I get all this up, then I'm gonna really get into the kneading. Okay, so this is what you're gonna do. Same principle, we're just gonna do it a little bit harder. We're gonna pull this over. What I like to do is put the palm of my left hand and my right hand over top and push and push away from you and then turn it around and do the same thing now i'm going pretty slow i usually do this a lot quicker but i wanted you to see you could do it with the other hand as well no problems whatever feels comfortable to you if you want to just do it with one hand you can but you want to definitely be pulling the bread towards you and pushing it away from you what you're doing is activating the gluten in the bread now mine's sticking a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more flour there. Turn it, and we're gonna do this between 10 and 15 minutes. And a good way to tell when your bread is done being kneaded is it doesn't look, I'm gonna call this craggly. <laughs> I don't know what other word to say, but do you see there's all these little craters and stuff here. When your bread is finished, when you don't need to knead anymore, it'll be a lot smoother than that. So I'm just gonna keep on kneading and show you the progress. All right, so I've been kneading this for probably, I don't know, seven to 10 minutes. I've added some more flour. Um, in fact, I used what was in there, so that was about a, maybe three quarters of a cup. And it's starting to uh, come together really nicely. And I can tell that by the smoothness when I turn the bread. And it's not tacky anymore. And it's also got a little bit of stretch to it, so I'm, I'm liking that. But I think it still needs a few more minutes, so we're gonna keep going. All right, guys, I think we're just about there. I added just a tad bit more flour, maybe a tablespoon. And I think two more turns and we'll be ready to put it into the Ninja Foodie and proof it. All right, that'll be good. Now you can see this is a lot smoother of a surface than what we started out with. Um, and that's what you wanna see. So instead of all the really uh, big craters, it's a much smoother surface. Now what I'm gonna do is just sort of tuck it underneath this is gonna rise in the Ninja Foodie. And no, don't worry about how it looks on the bottom because it's all gonna to come together so beautifully. Make it into a nice little round. Now we are gonna be doing a bread round in the Ninja Foodie. We're gonna put in one tablespoon of olive oil. We just want to cover the bottom and we're gonna roll the top of the bread into the olive oil. This is gonna prevent it from drying out and then we're just gonna flip it. So it's got a nice little oily surface on top. And then there's a couple of things you could do here. And I tried both of them out. You could put a little bit of saran wrap just loosely over the top and then put the lid down and we're gonna set the dehydration mode. The dehydration is so low of a heat, you're not gonna melt your saran wrap, so don't worry about that. But what I noticed was it, because there's a fan that circulates, it kind of blew all over the place. So I decided that I was gonna use a clean, this is a clean bleached flour sack that I use all the time, I just love them. And it is just damp, okay? Not real wet, but damp. And I'm just gonna open it up a little bit. It could be in double. I mean, these are pretty big. And let me show you how big they are. Because I talk about them all the time. I mean, they're, they're pretty big. So they are great for so many things. I strain yogurt, um, and I also, uh, you know, dry dishes and stuff. I have different ones for different purposes. And so we're gonna lay this right on over, 
close the lid. Turn the foodie on, hit the dehydration mode. We wanna take it all the way down to 105. Hit the time. So the minimum is an hour. Um, so what I would do is set another timer because it only needs to proof for 30 minutes. Now, it's not gonna be the end of the world if it goes a full hour, but it only needs to go 30 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and start that. Now what this is gonna do is provide this really low temperature environment for that yeast to thrive. Yeast loves 105 degrees. Um, so they will really multiply pretty quickly. Usually on the countertop, this takes a couple of hours. So we're gonna cut it down to 30 minutes. We're coming up on the last few seconds of our first uh, proofing of the bread. So what we expect to see when we open the lid is that the bread has doubled in size and it will also have a different feel to it. It's gonna be a lot stretchier. Um, it's gonna be a lot smoother. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove the towel here and I'm gonna put it to the side because we are gonna knead it again. And if it's very dry, you might wanna re-dampen it. And now we get out our bread and you can see it is a totally different feel to it now. It's real stretchy. It just, uh, I, I love making bread. I think it's glorious. So now what you wanna do is go ahead and, well, you could punch it down. I'm kinda gentle with my bread. And we're just gonna form it again. If you wanna have a rectangular loaf, and you have a rectangular loaf pan, then certainly now's the time that you're gonna put your bread into that and then set it into the Ninja Foodi for the final rise. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put it back in for 30 more minutes. So I'm just sort of getting a basic shape to it. Kind of flatten it down a little bit. Just a nice round shape. And that's gonna be fine. So now that we have the um, round back in there, and I just sort of played with it to get it a little bit flatter and round. So now that it rises, it's gonna rise outward and upward a little bit, but I didn't wanna have a real tall loaf like this, so I wanted to press it down into a, a decent size round. And we're just gonna cover it back over with our flour sack, or again, you could use a saran wrap, that's no problem, and just close the lid. And since it's already set for the hour, we could just let it go another 30 minutes then we'll be back and then we will set it on the bake and get our bread all baked up. All right, so we are done with the second uh, stage of this and we can remove the damp towel. And the bread has risen exactly like I wanted. It is wide and it is also doubled in height and it looks gorgeous. So now all we do is we score it. This is important. You can use um, you know, a sharp knife. Some people use scissors. I think scissors compress the bread too much. So I like to use this sh really sharp knife. You can put whatever design in you want. You can do a big X or like I like to do is just take it and go like this three times. All right, so once you get your marks in, you want you know either an X or three little slashes there, um, then we are going to go ahead and bake it. So we can select the Bake Roast button. Close the lid first. Select the Bake Roast and go to 325. And the time is gonna be 30 minutes. and start. Okay, now your bread is gonna bake in there and we can't wait to see what it looks like when it's done. 10 seconds to go, I'm so excited. I can actually smell the, the fresh bread baking smell that is oh, absolutely delicious. And let it go through the little cool cycle and then we'll open up the lid. Here we go. Wow. Oh, it's beautiful. So I'm gonna use my handy dandy oven mitts here, which are super clean, um, to grab this bread out. Because remember, this pot's pretty hot right now. You could also take, like if you have other mitts and you don't wanna reach down into the pot, you could take like the little silicone mitts that I use all the time or whatever you're used to using. You could dump the bread out. 
for me, I'm just going to go down here and grab it and bring it out. Look at that. So you have your bread. It's all done. Now, this is the sad part, guys. Don't cut it. You have to let it cool. I know. I really want a piece right now with some butter on it, but we have to let it cool at least 20 to 25 minutes. So let's do that, okay? Okay, so it's been like 25 minutes or so, and the bread is still warm to touch, but it is not hot and steaming like it was. The reason why I wanted to allow the bread to sit and cool for 25 to 30 minutes is because I wanted it to finish cooking and release its steam naturally. Sometimes when you get bread right out of the oven or the Ninja Foodie and you go in to cut it and it, it like is a little gummy and that's because it just wasn't allowed to cool and continue to cook. So to avoid that, go ahead and put your bread on this handy dandy rack. What, what that's gonna do is allow the bottom to stay kind of crispy and it won't absorb the steam that's built up and become soggy. So I put it on the little rack and now it's cool to the touch, which is fine. I mean, it's not totally room temperature. You could certainly leave this, you know, for eight hours or so, but I mean, who can wait that long? My goodness, it was hard enough waiting 25 minutes. So let's cut it. This is the best part. I'm gonna cut right down the center um, just to show you guys, but ordinarily, of course, I would start to cut bread from the end, but I'm gonna cut straight through the center. And I'm using a bread knife that I happen to love uh, from Pampered Chef, and I will definitely uh, link to that below. It's one of the best bread knives that I've ever had. And here we go, the bread. Look at that. It's a beautiful crumb. Now this bread is meant to be toasted or used as sandwich bread, okay? So that's the kind of bread we made. There's other types to make, and I'll get to those in other videos, but this is definitely your go-to sandwich bread, homemade or toast, delicious with butter. Now I'm not gonna spend the time toasting it. I'm just gonna go ahead and slice some and take a bite. love that. I love the sound that bread makes when you're cutting it. And especially when you made it yourself. I mean, you know, we're going to celebrate that. We just made bread in the Ninja Foodie. All right, so this is my butter bell, which keeps my butter at the perfect temperature for spreading. And I will link to one of those below as well. I love this thing. My mother-in-law gave it to me. I saw it sitting on her counter. I'm like, what in the world is that? She's like, oh, you don't know what a butter bell is? I was like, no, I don't. And she said, oh, you put your butter in it. You keep cold water in here. You change the water out every day, but it keeps the butter fresh on the counter and in spreadable condition um, and safe temperatures for a couple weeks. You just change the water every day though. All right, here we go. Oh, I love that. The outside's crunchy. The inside is perfect. It's like velvet, really. Oh my God. This might be the best bread I've ever had. I'm supposed to be low carb, guys. Mmm, bad. Mmm. You have to make this. I mean, you saw how easy it was. 90 minutes to fresh bread, and you know what ingredients went in here. Mm, absolutely perfect. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you're notified of upcoming videos that we make. And if you wanna join our Ninja Foodie groups, please um, check down in the description. I'll link to those below. We have two of them. One is Ninja Foodie 101, where we go over the basics of the Ninja Foodie and different uses, and we share recipes. And then we have Ninja Foodie Fresh and Healthy Meals, where we share little healthier meals with everybody. So be sure to join those groups. And until next time, bye-bye. Man.
Mm. 